Snowflake was my introduction to modern cloud databases, and it's still where I'd say I'm most comfortable even today. But this year, I've had two clients recently that needed to use BigQuery, and I'd definitely be lying to say that there wasn't a learning curve trying to go between the two. So in today's video, I wanna talk about a few of the lessons I've learned working uh, between the two, the similarities, differences, so that you can feel more comfortable working on either of them. So number one is the fact that BigQuery's naming conventions are unique, they're different, especially for somebody coming from a traditional data warehouse background, a SQL Server, Postgres, and now Snowflake. To me, Snowflake is really simple. It just makes sense. You have objects like databases and schemas and all that. But when you go to BigQuery, you'll see stuff like project and data set. Now, ultimately, they're they're kind of the same thing. Uh, but at first, there was a little bit of a learning curve just figuring out, you know, what does that mean? So just to make it even more clear, in BigQuery, a project is essentially the same as a database and a data set is the same as a schema. And when you use tools like dbt, you're going to use those interchangeably. And regardless of what you call it on any platform, really, the data modeling concepts and discussions and approaches are going to be the same regardless. So just embrace it uh, and just keep a lookout for that. Now, the second thing has to do with computation and really, I'd say even more so what it means to be serverless, because when you see stuff for Google BigQuery, they're talking about how it's serverless computing and a serverless database. I didn't really understand fully what that meant, I'd say, until I started working with it more. And the biggest place that I saw this is with computation. So if you're familiar with Snowflake, you make different objects for compute. So you'll, they'll, they'll be called a warehouse. You'll have different ones. You could have extra small, large, medium, depending on your use case. And each of them have a more of a cost, have more bandwidth, et cetera. When you go to BigQuery, one of the things you notice is you don't have any of that. You don't do anything with computation. It just auto scales for you. So if you have more of a workload, it's just going to auto scale up to meet that workload. And even more specifically here, an example is auto resuming and auto suspending. On Snowflake, you have to set that feature and that, that setting or else, you know, it'll just keep running indefinitely. But on BigQuery, that's just, again, handled behind the scenes. It's serverless. It just spins up and works as needed. There's nothing for you to configure or set. So that's kind of nice. Uh, just one less thing to worry about. Now, the last thing I'll talk about here is pricing and cost structure. They are different because on Snowflake, everything is based around computational spend and, and processing time. So if you have a warehouse running for a certain amount of time, that's going to cost X amount of dollars. Whereas on BigQuery, everything is based on bytes scan. So rather than time, it's about the kind of the sheer volume of data that you're scanning. And there's ways to minimize that on BigQuery, which is nice. So if you have things like clusters or partitions, it will make your query engine more efficient and therefore scan less bytes, which means lower costs. On Snowflake, I guess you could kind of have a similar outcome if you had a more optimized query. It doesn't have to run as long and then it won't cost as much. But they are not exactly the same, which again was a little bit of a learning curve at first. But either way, you know, as long as you understand what's going on, you can work around that accordingly. So bytes processed versus credits, and that's the difference. So as a data engineer, it's important to be well-rounded and be flexible to work on these different types of platforms. And hopefully this has helped you a little bit with understanding the difference between Snowflake and BigQuery. Thank you as always for watching and I'll see you at the next video.